Food plots are a great way to attract, hold, and hunt deer and turkeys. And it's usually the first thing that people do to improve their property. And this is for good reason. Food plots have a massive effect on how deer and turkeys use your property. It also can help make antlers bigger and can just improve the overall health of your herd. And like I said, it's usually the first thing people do to start improving their property, to start making their hunting better. But it's also one of the things that people mess up the most. Uh, you see all the time on Facebook groups and forums where people are posting questions and pictures of a patchy food plot that is worse than a middle school boy's beard. The comments get them straightened out pretty quick because it's usually the same mistakes people are making over and over again, whether that's skimping on something to save money or time. So in this video, we're gonna go over four mistakes that people make when putting in new food plots. But as usual, before we get into the tips, do me a favor, and if this is your first time on my channel, hit that subscribe button. And make sure you hit that bell icon so you can be notified every time I upload a video. And the first mistake that people are making when they put in a food plot is they put it in a bad spot. There are some things you need to think about before you commit your time and resources to putting in this food plot. Don't plant your food plots too close to your property boundary without considering how you're going to conceal this from your neighbors. It's not always a terrible idea, but putting a food plot near a property boundary will have its own unique challenges. There'll be some things you have to consider and think about before you put that plot there. You also have to think about how you're going to approach this food plot if you plan to hunt it. If you plant it in a place where you just, there's no way you could access it without bumping every deer in the neighborhood, I mean, there's really no point to putting it there. You also need to consider the shape of the food plot, the amount of drainage, the soil type, the amount of sun exposure. These things all have a massive impact on the success or failure of a food plot. The second mistake is something that's usually only made a few times, but it's something that you have to repeat just so you don't commit this from the get-go, and that's skipping a soil test. Whether it's being lazy or cheap, skipping a soil test is usually the first mistake people make when putting in a food plot. It's usually... Usually this is committed by people who are putting in their first or second food plot. When you're trying to grow something specific, it's going to require its own specific nutrients and acidity. Without knowing these levels firsthand, you have no idea how much you should or should not add. Incorrect soil acidity means the plants won't be able to utilize the nutrients as effectively. So that means whatever fertilizer you do put down, it's just going to be wasted money because it's going to leach right down through the soil. Or you might be in a situation where your lime is actually pretty close to where it should be, but you spend the money on lime anyway and dump a bunch of money out that you could better utilize somewhere else. Same goes for fertilizer. Maybe you don't need as much nitrogen, but you get a triple 12 or something like that and you throw that all out anyway and it's just wasted. Just take the little extra time and money that it requires to get a soil test so you know exactly what you need to add or don't add to have a successful food plot. And the third mistake is putting down way too much seed. We've all probably been there if we put in a plot or two. We put it out one year and it's kind of patchy so we're like, well maybe I'll just throw out some more seed and that'll help and it doesn't. Seeds have a recommended seeding rate for a reason. It's there to help guide you so you don't overcrowd your plantings and they outcompete each other and you end up with that patchy beard of a food plot. Now, unfortunately, that does mean you have to do a little bit of math. I know it sucks, but if you want a good food plot, you really need to pay attention to this stuff. On each bag of, of seed, there is a pure live seed percentage and a germination rate percentage. To calculate how much seed you should put out, you take your pure live seed times your germination rate to get a number. Let's say we've got an iron clay cow peas and the pure live seed amount is 98% and the germination rate is 85%. Multiply these numbers together and you get, what, 0.833. Then take the recommended seeding rate, which for cow peas is 70 to 80 pounds per acre. We'll take that mid range. So we'll say 75 pounds per acre of planting rate times that 0.833 that we got from the last step, and that'll give us the amount of seed we need to put out, which is about 90 pounds per acre. But that's if you're planting just a monoculture food plot, just cow peas, just soybeans, something like that. If you're planting a mixture, you need to adjust these rates based on the number of species that you're gonna throw out there. And you also should not mix large seeds with small seeds, because it won't broadcast it evenly. This is why a lot of people prefer to just go ahead and buy a commercial product, a buck on bag seed, which I can't blame them. You know, sometimes I don't want to do this math either, but I do like that I get to pick exactly what's in my, my food plot seed. 
The only thing I will say about buying a commercial product, that buck on bag, is you really have to pay attention to the label, what's in that blend. Don't get anything that's got ryegrass in it. That's nothing eats ryegrass. They'd have to be starving to death to eat ryegrass. Just pay attention to that and you should be fine. I'm not gonna recommend a specific product because everybody's got their own thing, their, their brand loyalty, and I can't blame them. I've got my own. Just pay attention to that so you don't throw out a bunch of filler crap that nothing's gonna eat. Calculating the correct seeding rate, whether you make your own mixture or buy that buck on bag, is going to help you create that dense mass food plot without them overcrowding and outcompeting each other. And the fourth mistake that a lot of food plotters make is they have terrible, terrible soil prep. You absolutely have to eliminate the competition if you're going to plant a food plot. This helps make sure that the nutrients are going to go to the plants you want to grow and not something else. It helps to make sure you have a good germination rate and good seed to soil contact. Eliminate the competition with a non-selective herbicide like glyphosate and then if you can, burn off that dead matter. Then go through with your implement of choice, whether that's a disc or a tiller. Um, if you've got access to a no-till drill, that'd be perfect, but break up that soil. Then depending on the size of the seed, you may need to drag it in. And then I like to go over it with a cultipacker or a lawn roller to make sure I've got good seed to soil contact. That's the most important thing with soil prep, seed to soil contact. So that was four mistakes people make when planting a food plot. If you've got any more mistakes you'd like to share or maybe some tips you'd like to get out there, leave those down in the comments below. Hit that like button if you like this video, share it if you found it helpful, and make sure that you are subscribed so you can stay informed.